You're watching GM6 Drone Mapping. Today, I'm going to show you how to connect your Reach RS to Intrip so that you can get RTK corrections. Let's get started. All right, now that I'm ready to connect to uh, Intrip, first thing I want to do is I'll use my cell phone and turn it into a Wi-Fi hotspot. After that, I'll turn on the Reach RS, which has already been set up to connect to my phone's hotspot. And then I'll use my tablet with the Reach View app on it and connect it to the hotspot as well. Once both the Reach RS and my tablet are connected, I'll open up the Reach View app. Automatically, it will default to whatever settings that you previously had. So the easiest way to set this up for the in-trip connection is to go into the little sprocket here at the top and then scroll down to the bottom where it says reset to default and just reset any changes that you've made. Now if your Reach RS does not reconnect automatically or to the hotspot, then just turn it off and then back on. Once it connects, you're ready to set it up for your in-trip connection. Next, I'll go down to the correction input tab, turn the switch on for base correction, and then click on in-trip. From here, I'll go into the address and I'll put in the web address of the service provider that I'm going to use. In this case, it's rtktogo.com. Then I'll enter in the port number, which is 2101. And that's a very common port number. And then I'll put in my username and password. And because I've already connected to the Intrip server, then it's already populated. Now, if it wasn't already there, you just type in the name or the identification number, which is called a mount point. When you're setting up an account, either through RTK to go or any other service, you should get this mount point ahead of time because that's going to be the specific tower that you want to connect with. If you're more than 10 kilometers away, you're not going to get an accurate correction. Once all that's done, hit apply. So now I'll go back and click on status. And when you see the gray bars, then you know you're receiving a correction. So things to keep in mind here. Once the AR validation gets to 3.0 or higher, you'll have a fix. And so it could take a minute or two and it should rise a lot higher. Mine normally will go up to 999, which is great. Then next, you'll see the number on the right here. This is the distance between the Reach RS and the Intrip tower that you're connected to. This one has to be within 10 kilometers. It's also called your baseline. All right, so I'm gonna go scroll down here a little and you can see where it says position. These numbers represent where I'm at. This is my GPS location for the Rover or the Reach RS. So if I scroll down here, you'll see this is the base position. If you notice, these numbers are not moving. And that's because they're coming from the Intrip connection, which is a fixed location. So if you're not real familiar with how RTK GPS works, this is a good example. You're merely getting corrections from a fixed location through a radio signal, or in this case, through an internet connection. And if you look up to the top of the right part of the screen, you'll notice that it says rover and base, and each number in there represents how many satellites that it's receiving. 
All right, so now I'm going to create some GCPs. So I have some targets laid out on the ground. I'll just go around and collect a few points. So I'll click on the Survey tab, and then at the top right, New Project. So you can either leave the project name tab blank, or you can give it a name. If you leave it blank, it'll just say point one, and then the next one will be point two, and so forth. Then I'll hit Next. I'm going to click on Fixed Solution, because that's what I want. I'm going to set it for two minutes. All right, after I hit done, now I'm going to tap on the bottom left corner here, this button, and it'll pull up this little box. Now this is important because you want to make sure that you put the height of your pole in here. And if you use the little brass piece that comes inside the package with the reach, then you want to click on that box as well. If you don't fill this information out properly, then your altitude readings will be off. From here, you just click the green button that says collect and wait for two minutes. All right, now that that's complete, I'll hit the save and go button and move on to my next point. Now to export a file that you can use in your photogrammetry software. You just go to the top where the three dots are and tap on that button and then it will give you the option to export in several different file types. I want a CSV file so I'll click on that one and then it exports the file into my tablet where I can then extract it later or email it, whatever I need to do. All right, well now that's it. It's that simple. All right, well please let me know if this information was helpful. Leave a comment below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. We'll see you next time.